Welcome back. It's a beautiful tropical morning and I've come down the hill to take a look and see what's coming up and show you some of the progress that's been made since last time we were down here. Also, some of you have asked uh, what camera I use to record on. Most of my filming is done on a Canon 70D, uh, which works quite nicely, though I got more lenses than I need for it. You really only need like probably two lenses for all the filming uh, that you would do on a normal YouTube thing. And my other camera is a Nikon L, uh, a Nikon Coolpix L830, and that's the one I'm using right now, which is just a cheaper camera that I don't worry about so much. I carry down the hill with me, I take it to the beach, that kind of thing. If I'm out hiking, that's the camera I bring. It's lighter, it's less heavy, and it's a mirrorless camera. So there you go, those are the two cameras I use. And I'll put links to them in the description with uh, Amazon Associates tagged onto it. So if you decide to go and buy a, a, a camera, you know, I'll make like five or six dollars. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm down here, down the hill, and uh, let, let's go around and see what's going on because I can see from here that stuff is starting to happen. Hey now, look at this. Okay, this last week, um, we got down here and dug this bed up and planted it with bush yard long beans. They actually look like uh, they were way over planted. I had some help. Um, so I I'm actually gonna have to thin these guys out, but you can see I mean, basically we had very probably close to 100% germination rate. Beans are really good that way. Uh, they tend to not have the germination issues of some other things. So yeah, there we go. That's looking really nice that's gonna be a lot of beans also we have looks like we've got some limes down here I've got to pick up uh, yeah we got some rotten limes falling here and some good ones there's a lime tree hiding back here look at that it's totally in the brush I should probably cut down the trees that are around it and give it some space uh, it's producing pretty well even in the shade so a little bit more sunshine will help. So there's the bean bed. And uh, I string trimmed space for another bed just below, but I haven't gotten to it yet. I just brought the string trimmer down here, so we're gonna get some serious stuff done. All right, that's where we just were at the beds up there. And here's another area I cleared. And then I cleared, this is actually part of the road but I decided to plant it with pumpkins because nobody, nobody drives down here. And it's good soil and it's nice and wide open and sunny. So I see, look at all these pumpkin hills. See these babies coming up? Looking good. A lot of these I overplanted because the seed was old and I, wasn't, I was kind of afraid. It was from last year, I've lost some beans and other things to them not coming up, so I really overplanted. You can see, uh, you know, four or five in some of these. They all have to come down to three. Down here, yeah, look at that, that's kind of ridiculous. I was afraid, I was afraid. So what I like to do is nip them off at the ground with a pair of scissors, just leave a couple because it really impacts the growth rate and the health of things if you've got too many. So I'll leave four for now and in case the cutworms take one. Do the same thing over here. Look at this. This is ridiculous. That's a weed right there. This is ridiculous. Okay, so I know now that I can leave pumpkin seeds on the shelf for a year without refrigeration and still get a bazillion percent germination rate. So chalk that up. Uh, I've just, just, it's better to overplant. And besides, pumpkins make so many seeds per pumpkin. It's not like seeds are really valuable you know one pumpkin has enough to plant an acre of pumpkins and we've been saving pumpkin seeds all year yeah take it down to a few there and let them go 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 guys go you can see I have more pumpkins here on the other side of the road again way over planted I'm gonna have to thin 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 but we put the hills about you know, mostly around six feet apart or so. There's a little hill up there. Hill, hill, hill. There's a hill here with some coming up. 
maybe the, the clay is actually really hard in this section, so they're taking a little longer to push their way up. But yeah, we're gonna have a lot of pumpkins if these turn out for us. Holy moly. Down here is where I planted Bob and some of my other favorite pumpkins. <laughs> look, at, look at the germination rate on this one. <laughs> you see, did I, did I use too many seeds? I, I think I did. I was really afraid this wasn't gonna come up. <laughs> all right, all right, yes, yes. I, 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 maybe, maybe the uh, vicissitudes of the last year, uh, the ups and downs, have made me a little more paranoid about success than I normally would be. This is, this is ridiculous. This is so stupid. <laughs> Oh dear. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to kill a lot of you. Let's just go along and thin. Oh boy, this is ridiculous. Well, this is probably the way nature would plant them, right? You have a big pumpkin that rots in the field and uh, you know, every seed comes up the next season when the weather's correct. I don't know, this is ridiculous. I'm going to thin this to about half of what is here and then come back later and, and we'll see which ones look the best out of those. But it looks like we will have Bob again, which would be great. Um, I'm very happy about that because that was an excellent pumpkin. Oh my goodness, this is just, this is ridiculous. Yeah, don't do this. This is too much. Too many seeds. I just, I just basically dumped an entire envelope of seeds in here that I had saved because I thought, you know, I bet you hardly any of them come up. We're going to be in trouble. <sighs> yeah, that's funny. All right, so we should have all of our varieties then. All the varieties I saved from last year. And now I know. I mean, seriously, like I, I had beans that I saved last year and I tried planting them eight months later and none of them came up. None of them. And, and I thought, man, I have never seen things degrade so quickly as they do here in the humid, tropical climate. Uh, and, you know, we don't have air conditioning in our house. So, yeah, there you go. Anyhow, that looks a little more reasonable. Let's thin it out a little bit, and I'll come back again in a week and it out some more. This one here I planted the same way. I planted a heavy amount of it, but it looks like this one actually didn't decide to uh, have such a high germination rate. I don't know what's going on here. Some seeds worked their way out of the ground. We did have some hard rain. That there looks like a loofa. There are loofas that were growing all over up there. You could see the remnants of the vines probably on top of that cocoa. And they really are a pain in the neck because they'll cover everything else and they look kind of like a pumpkin coming up. These guys I'm just going to leave alone and we'll see what happens. But there we go. So we've got multiple hills here. There's a hill right here. There's a hill right here. And then in between these hills, I'm just going to string trim until the pumpkins really get their wings and start running over the area, then they'll take care of themselves. But we have to make sure that we give them space uh, to run at the beginning because the weeds will really wreak havoc and we could end up with nothing and we don't want nothing. So there we go. All right, let's go take a look at the yams. Looks like we need to do a little weeding over here. Got some yams coming up. There's a little prickly yam. There's a bigger yam. I don't even know all the yams because local names don't always translate into things that I know. A little bit of a language barrier sometimes. Okay, so look at these guys. These guys are really kicking. These are the yams that bear in uh, groups. These are looking pretty good. Yeah, just gotta come through here with the hoe and 
knock down the weeds in between these rows. Maybe I'll get to that on Saturday. Saturday is usually the big farm day for us where uh, Rachel and I and the kids go out and take care of whatever needs to be done the most. The kids work on weeding their beds and we work on getting everything uh, out here. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> That's cool. Don't know what that is. Some sort of yam. <laughs> yeah, cool. Look at that. Oh boy, sometimes I, you know, you start over. I was the Florida gardening expert, and then I, I moved to the slopey clay volcanic soil tropics here with a whole new set of crops and got to learn everything all over again. So these are the dasheen that I planted, aka malanga. And as you can see, they're putting out new leaves now, recovering quite quickly from the rough cut and transplant and drop that they had. This is nice to see. And this is Tanya here. This is Tanya with a purple stem. And there, down here are the Tanyas with a green stem. This is uh, Xanthosoma sagittifolium, for those of you who are keeping track of your Latin. Looking nice. And in between these, there are yams. So I've actually got to get some more sticks out here, but I have an idea for supporting them that I'm going to try so I don't have to keep cutting sticks out of the woods and sticking them because I'm really tired of doing that. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of something, uh, maybe some thicker chunks of wood and nail them in at the end of each one of these rows here and then take a piece of uh, bamboo and put it across the top and then put some strings down from the bamboo. So if I can make that in any kind of a stable way, it's very hard to hammer things into the ground here. So I'm just gonna have to try and make it as stable as possible. And then we'll see if I can, you know, let the yams climb on sting, uh, strings up to the bamboo instead. But it'd be a lot easier than cutting more sticks. As you can see, I've already cut way too many sticks. This is the top of the yam beds here. This is the highest portion of it, looking down through the yams to the river. And up here is where we had the pigeon peas last season, and it's gotten all overgrown. I cut the pigeon peas down because I was thinking I would come back and replant this area with something else. But the pigeon peas have grown back from the stumps, and they want to crop again. So I've decided I'm just going to leave the pigeon peas that are left and take the string trimmer through here clean this area up and then plant pumpkins in between the peas and see how that works. Maybe we'll get a kind of a dual cropping thing going on here. Got some really healthy looking weeds down here. One thing about these weeds, you can probably see, there are quite a few nitrogen fixers. This is a shy plant here. See that? <laughs> Anyhow, that's uh, that's kind of a cool plant, but it's a nitrogen fixer. This is some sort of a wild bean here, which is a nitrogen fixer. And there's a combination of plants that are nitrogen fixers and plants that hold together hillsides from erosion. All these plants have been designed to fill specific uh, niches in the environment. And the nitrogen fixing is to obviously add more nitrogen and fertility to the soil. And then there are other things that are breaking up the ground or holding the ground together and they show up under different environments and if you're smart enough which sometimes I can figure it out and sometimes I can't you can kind of determine what sort of growing conditions you will have in your garden according to what weeds are there and these weeds look pretty happy so this is obviously a pretty decent patch of soil with a good mix of species but I would say that the ground is likely somewhat light in nitrogen because we have a lot of nitrogen fixers showing up. Just my rough and ready analysis. Now if we were to go back through here, we'd come back to the bean bed that I just planted. And we have gone the circle all the way around this section. This area needs to be cut and planted too. I might put pumpkins here. Might put some potatoes here, like sweet potatoes, not white potatoes, because I still don't know those are going to grow here. 
I have some experiments going on, but I haven't done it yet. Or maybe I'll put some more cassava. There's a lot of cassava. It's one other thing we did here. You can see there's cassava. One of the farmers showed me how to do this. He sticks the cassava cuttings at the bottoms of the beds. So the beans are growing up top, and then in the loose soil at the bottom of the bed, there is a row of cassava. So you get two crops out of the same bed, and the cassava takes a lot longer to produce than the beans do. So we'll get the beans out, and then the cassava will grow big and fill the area up. That's kind of neat. I love the intercropping stuff. Well, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. Check me out on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com and uh, check out any one of my 1400 plus articles over there. I appreciate you guys coming over and reading and seeing what I'm up to. And I try to uh, make that a resource on all kinds of uh, everything, basically. So everything related to gardening and farming and homesteading. So if somebody asks me a question, I'll often answer it over there and make a post out of it. So that's The Survival Gardener. Dot com and thank you all for joining me today. It's uh, it's kind of fun to just come down here and bring you guys with me I haven't been down here in uh, five or six days and everything's coming up and it's really cool to see so Thanks for joining me for that and until next time may your thumbs always be green I went to see David Ah that David the David the good we sing about science and other nautical terms. I was really afraid this wasn't going to come up.